Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back to part four of Growing Trees on Mars. In this project, I'm mixing up my own Martian simulant soil, putting it in the greenhouse and trying to grow trees in it. I'm also 3D printing a Curiosity rover to go in the landscape. All the ingredients of the soil are completed. I just need to refine it and mix it together. The 3D printing of the Curiosity rover from the NASA website is also completed. I was in at the makerspace yesterday to print off the last component of the rover, the main body. This model was printed from a file downloaded from the NASA website. So I have all the components of the rover now. There's a lot of them. So there's the main body. There's the wheels and tires. They're separate pieces. You can download this model from the NASA website or it's easier to go onto Thingiverse and someone has organized all the components into three printing sessions. This model has 52 components, so it should be fun painting and assembling it. The printing of the rover went really smoothly. This model requires no supports, so you can print it straight from the file. The Mars greenhouse has a temperature and humidity gauge on it, but I also got one for the plant room. The two match up pretty closely. This says 24.4 Celsius. This one says 24.8. This one says 65% humidity. And this one says 69. So they're within the right ballpark. You can also see the max and min. So you can see it's gotten up to 32.9 degrees Celsius in here, 99% humidity and it's gone down to 20.1 degrees Celsius and 38% humidity, which is quite low for this room. I am working on a 3D model of the new 2020 rover. It's very similar to the Curiosity rover. It just has a few minor changes. Here's a view of my iron oxide that I created for my Mars soil. It's dried out now, but it's still quite a black color. So I was reading, you need to heat it up for it to turn a nice Mars red color. So I'll do that today. I'll be using this toaster oven to heat up my iron oxide to try and get it to turn a nice red color. The toaster oven has a little tray inside. I'll line this tray with tin foil and transfer my iron oxide into the tray and then I'll heat it up but outside. I don't think it would be a good idea to heat this inside. It would probably smell horrible. I'm just making the edges all nice and neat on this foil. I'll start adding the iron oxide now. Kind of uh, lumpy. You can see a bit of rust in there. Or that red color. Heating it up may bake out the impurities. I, I don't know what it does, but uh, it seems to work. I, uh, I saw a few videos on YouTube where someone did this and turned it a nice red color. So I'll try it. Stuff still a little wet. This iron oxide has a very distinct smell to it. It smells like a very metallic kind of smell. I wonder if Mars smells like that. 
You can use this iron oxide for coloring paint too. If you make your own oil paint, you can make a red oxide color. Oh, it smells horrible. All right, so that's looking good. Let me just break these big pieces up a bit. My iron oxide cookies are ready for baking, so I'll get them in the oven. If you don't want to use a good toaster oven, you can find these at secondhand stores quite cheap. I've got the oven going outside now, and it does smell horrible. It's, uh, you know that smell when something's, an electrical smell when something's burning? It smells like that, it's a horrible smell. So I'm glad I did it outside. You can see smoke coming out of the door here. It might be steam, it's probably steam. However, we'll see what happens. I have it at about 425 degrees is what the, the knob says here. So I've read that you have to heat cycle it a couple of times. Uh, you know, maybe even four or five times before it retains that nice Mars red color. So we'll see what happens. Maybe nothing will happen. Who knows? It's been about five minutes now and it's still smoking like crazy. I've moved the toaster oven further in the backyard. I noticed my wife had laundry out and I didn't want it smelling like this stuff, so. So it's kind of cooled down now. And you can see it has turned a really nice red color. So I'm gonna give it another heat cycle. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that red color. I'll have to break some of those chunks open and see if the red color is all the way through. Hopefully it's not just on the surface of the pieces. It's a very windy day today. It's still warm out. It's about uh, plus three or four degrees. Very unusual for this time of year. But that wind's just blowing this smoke like crazy all around. So I'm staying downwind of all the smoke so I don't breathe it in. I've got a pair of pliers. I'm going to try breaking one of the chunks open with the pliers and see if it's red inside. It looks like it's a nice red color all the way through, so that's good. You can see the nice red color on the end of the pliers here too. It's been almost 10 minutes and the iron oxide isn't smoking near as much now. I think a lot of that was probably water vapor, you know, steaming off. So I'll let it go a little longer and then I'll let it cool down and we'll see what we have. I'm running the iron oxide through another heat cycle. This will be the third one. These toaster ovens, are really good if you want to sterilize small batches of bonsai soil. It's 3.30 in the afternoon on December 21st, the shortest day of the year, so I've got about another hour left of light out here before it gets dark. I'll turn the oven off now and I'll let the iron oxide cool down. Let's have a look at it now. Open the lid. And we'll... oh, it's looking pretty good. Nice and hot too. I'm back inside now. Let's have a look at our iron oxide. That looks really good. Really happy with the way it turned out. My iron oxide's done. So next I'll have to wash and reduce down my aluminum oxide. I'll leave the work on my aluminum oxide for tomorrow when it's light outside. Tonight I can get all the pieces for the Mars rover. I can take all the burrs off them, sand them, and prime them and get them ready for painting and assembly. I've got all the pieces of the Mars rover laid out. There's not a whole lot of colors on it. There's white, there's kind of gray, there's black, and then there's a whole bunch of little metallic finishes like, you know, some goldy colors and you know, various shades of silver and that. So the main body of it is white. 
And one thing that really bugs me about, you know, white plastic is that it's sort of semi-translucent. You can see through it. White plastic is semi-translucent, and when you hold it up to a bright light, you can almost see right through it. You can see the internal grid structure in here, and I don't like that. I like it to look like it's metal or aluminum or titanium, that it's a solid piece. To solve the translucency problem, I like to paint white parts with silver first as a base coat or primer, and then I paint the white over top. If I were to chip the white paint, you would still see the silver underneath, so it still looks like metal. I've got some nice aluminum paint here, so I'll start painting the body. The nice thing about this aluminum paint too, is the white won't stick to the aluminum very well. So if you want to chip the white paint away and kind of show rivets or screws, you can easily do that and it shows the aluminum beneath. On aircraft and that, you can use it for weathering. You can chip the leaning edge of wings and show the aluminum underneath and it looks really realistic for chips. So the silver paint won't fill the, you know, the 3D printing marks. You can see the kind of zigzag pattern from the printer head. It won't cover those up like a, you know, a good primer would. But we'll go over top of this with a flat white which is like a primer and it should you know, help fill in all these little micro grooves and make it look smooth in the end, hopefully. This coat is just to stop it from being translucent. With 3D printing you get a lot of little hairs, the little plastic strands as the head lifts up and you know it just they trail behind, so you gotta clean those up too. I do need a slightly bigger brush here, but uh, this is the only one I could find. All my other ones had kind of hardened up. I've got the first coat of silver on the main body. It's looking good. The other silver parts on the vehicle are the wheels, the hub, the spokes of the wheel, and some of the springs inside here. There's like a horizontal spring here. The rest of the outside of the wheel part here is black, but uh, just those parts I'll paint. It'll take a little cleanup first. There's a lot of hairs from the 3D printing. And there's also some, there's some light little plates here that secure the part to the bed of the printer. So I've got to cut those off. That just stops it lifting off the print bed. Gives it a little more surface area. I've got the wheel cleaned up of all its 3D printing fuzzies. So now I'll start painting it, starting with the center hub. I may have to use several coats. This paint is, all the metallic sinks to the bottom, so you gotta keep it well stirred all the time. Or it just doesn't cover very well, as you can see here. Yeah, I'll have to give that paint a stir, I think. All right, let's see if that covers any better. Ah, it's a little better. And then there's these little pieces that go across here that need painting also. I can't really paint and hold it in front of the camera too well. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Here's the wheel all painted up now. I can show you what that looks like inside a wheel. Um, I think it goes in like this. Wait, I have to line up the hole. I think this hole is to drain out sand from the wheel. There, so that's kind of the wheel, what it looks like. Work on the Mars Rover is going really well. I'm having lots of fun painting it up but it's getting late in the evening and I'm hoping to post this video tonight. So I think I'll have to continue the work tomorrow, painting the rover and making my Martian soil. So I hope you join me for part five of planting trees on Mars. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>